to be the whole meeting at 5.31 p.m. Um, we, I did hear from Council Member Schaefer. He is traveling, so not able to be here today. Um, but we have a forum. So anything for the good of the order before we get started? Uh, Councilman Applin? Yeah, I actually have several things. I'll try to be quick. Um, first, I sent a response to the written report on the request of proposal for the municipal finance sustainability plan. And I'm not sure if that can get forwarded to the rest of the council, just to make sure that my input is that possible. Um, the city administrator will do that upon her return from vacation. Um, okay. She received it while she was on vacation, yeah. and so she's guarding that. Okay. Time. Um, so then um, also, let's see. Um, Secondly, I was approached by uh, Mr. Thomas, who is a horticulture teacher up at Cedar Crest, and the Future Farmers of America group, uh, club, team, I, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but um, they would like to do a community service project, and apparently in the past they planted bulbs. I think at one point they planted them out by the Welcome to Duval sign by the bridge, and they were wondering if they could have permission to do that again. And there might be another location they wanted to do it out just to be for ideas. Um, if they could have permission to do that and also wanted to know if there could be um, a donation from the city where we can provide the bulb. So I think that that might be a report that's coming today. And then the other item is I had been approached by someone else about the viewing platform or stage at the depot park. And that used to have, um, it wasn't fully covered, I guess, but it had enough of a pergola that you could, um, you know, put tarps or find a way to cover it. But that had been removed several years ago, just it had gotten older and wasn't, and I'm, I'm assuming safe anymore. Anyway, they're hoping that we could put up some kind of a new covered roof um, and have it usable as a covered stage for events that happen. Um, you know, even in the summer when the sun is hot, it'd be nice to have a cover. So I think that staff has been looking into that, but I just was wanting to share that with council and find out if there could be an update on timing or if there needs to be some kind of funding um, approval for something like that. And then finally, um, I was also curious as part of our economic development so, uh, council committee, if there was any update on possibly meeting with OSCO, because I think the economic development grants might be coming up due again. And so I'm not sure we're gonna have a meeting with OSCO um, to find out what they might wanna submit and how that might work with what we're interested in. So I wasn't sure where we were at with that. And that's it. Thank you, Councilor Marshall. And this is sort of more important. Some of the council probably already is aware of it. We had a little bit of outreach, but the um, Cynthia and I had attended uh, the opening of the crosswalk in Redmond um, that had been put in place. And, you know, it was disappointing over the, over the day weekend. There was some vandalism. I know the police department is investigating, but, um, you know, there was, uh, again, it sort of brings up some issues that we've dealt with you know, here in the past, just in terms of the concern. And, and uh, that was such a, Sort of a bringing together, you know, a, a large swath of different representatives from different cities. When it opened, there was a lot of excitement. It was a little disappointing to see that. And I know they're investigating, and my expectation is the city will work, you know, with to have the, the crosswalk restored. But again, for for folks that haven't been monitoring the news, it was sort of a, a low point of the of the presidency. Yeah, I'll go ahead and have like a piggyback on the wrong upper river. Um, I think it'd be like just for council or send a letter of support to you. Anything else for the good of the order? Oh, I heard on the news that they're waiting for the weather to dry up before they get it down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't think we really have anything on the consent today that, you know, might have questions, but just our review of regular meeting agenda would usually include that. Anyone have any? Okay. 
Um, so with that, our first discussion item is a conversation on agenda items for the council retreat. Um, so if you recall, we talked about, let's see, when was the date? I think it's March 12th, I want to say, which is our second Tuesday of next month. Um, just since that's usually a time that most of us have in our calendar. And so I wanted to just make sure, I think I have a good idea of what we want to talk about, but there's a lot of things. So I just want to make sure we discuss what you want that agenda to look like, and that way we can narrow it in a little bit more. I think a couple of the key things that have come up um, is one of the smaller things would be that one council procedure of asking one question per turn. We had had some discussion last time about would that be easier that's kind of tricky to manage sometimes. So would a clock or you know a time be easier um, so that you can use that however you want? So anyways, that might be a micro conversation that we have at the retreat if everyone wants. Um, the other big thing I would really like for it to fall during this time though would be discussing council um, budget priorities. And I think that would be like bigger, broader vision type stuff. And then looking at maybe smaller goals that could help facilitate those larger dreams, I suppose. Um, and then that way, of course, we would have had those discussions and then so when the mayor and staff are doing their budget that, you know, they would have heard those things from us and can take that into consideration. So those are the two big things, knowing that likely we don't want to go past, you know, nine o'clock at night. Um, yeah, that can take a lot of time. And so I don't know if we just want to go around Tell me if there's anything else, or we could put on a list so we could always use that second Tuesday to list any follow up items, you know, if we run out of time, or if specifically around the budget priorities, is there a way you want that process to look? Do you like having the big sheets of paper up on the wall with like, um, we'll use safe tape, Steve? I think I saw him walk in. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be careful on the walls. <laughs> but, um, you know, with the stickers and voting and that kind of thing. I mean, I, I want to know like what you want it to look like and how we can make it meaningful um, and make sure if there's anything else on the agenda for the retreat that you'd like. Yeah, I, was, I, I mean, I, I think that in and of itself could take up a large, yeah. if not the whole meeting between back and forth. I think the one, you know, ask that I would have is, um, you know, I think it is a useful, uh, Action to sort of recalibrate and review. And, and I think one of the things, the challenges we've had in the council, though, is consistency for carrying this through over, over time. But ideally, you know, long term priorities that are going to be short, medium, long term priorities, those long term priorities ideally should not be changing. There should not be a lot of turn. And, and I know we've got we've got new members of the council. So I think, you know, how we arrived at some of these, but it would also be good to sort of use that in addition to whatever we identify as part of the process for the going forward to also have an opportunity to look back and see how those align. Are they the same? Are they different? If they're different, why are they different? You know, we're, we're just not following up on items or, um, but but I think you know, that that additional exercise or that part of the process would, would make the overall um, exercise more, more useful. Um, yeah. I, I think for me, what would be helpful is if we were to have a refresh for these items and maybe a no. Mm -hmm. A quick refresh around Robert's rules of order. Um, I mean, I'm still thinking about that. We came back again today. Mm -hmm. And also, um, in those notes, the, the Jurassic Parliament mentioned that you start off the discussion with the motion. And then, then council members talk about the motion and then vote. Whereas it seems here we're going to have a little, we talk about it and then we have the motion. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I kind of want to see it, the motion brought forward first and then discuss, because then you can make amendments while you're discussing it. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's a way to do a quick. Condensed version of some of the key things that would be useful yeah. for us. <laughs> I'll make a motion now, point of order. Yeah. Give <laughs> a little bit of work. Yeah, <laughs> those were fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, well, no, she, she did. did. Not she did. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anything else? I mean, I do feel like that will mostly fill up, and that was really helpful. I think would it be helpful if um I I don't wouldn't go too far back, but from some of our last, I think I'm thinking of at least the very last budget sort of I don't know if we called it a budget retreat or what it was. I just remember there was that one where we had the big goals and the small things. I can find all those documents because they're just in my email that I emailed to, uh, emailed the council in the past. So if that'd be helpful for me to pull them. Put them together, resend them out so everyone can look through them, and maybe that helps, you know, make you think of things or at least see where the last few years we've come from, and then how that, like you said, those longer term goals probably aren't changing very much, but where are we at with them? And that might help. I know why, the why they change. I mean, yeah. that's, I think the other part is it's important to know why you want something versus also why you don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't make room for this conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, you know, past that, so, and then, yeah, I mean, I think, so we had also talked about possibly having um, our city attorney there and um, the other attorney as well, and kind of be able to do a little intro with them. And I think it'd be great to pick their brain on, you know, that one part of our council procedure that we had discussed of like, do we want to look at that and maybe try something new? And if we hate it, we could always change it, but maybe it's time to change that slightly and, and see if it works better for our group. Um, but beyond that, you know, if we end up using up another Tuesday and we have more things, maybe we want to go more in depth on Robert Schulz past a quick refresh. Um, oh, I didn't finish my note of council's role. Like we brought up best practices. Are there other topics that maybe won't make um, this retreat, but that you would want to follow up? Often we would do two retreats in a year. That hasn't always happened, and there's no pressure if we don't want to. But if there are other trainings, things like that, that we want to at least put on like a parking lot so that we have a slight agenda for the next one if we need to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know what budget we have for some of this stuff, but again, given some of the, the turnover and the cancel out. And there's various versions of it, but you know, sort of whether it's the inside training or I think we did one couple um, retreats ago that was very in depth. It was a little more, but I think in terms of you know your style, are you a data person? Are you uh, an empath? Are you? I mean, there's different yeah. variations of that, and I think it helps both in terms of interpreting what people say, but also um, uh, you know, essentially communicating what your preferences are out to them. Department group. If there's a lightweight, not the offensive version of that. Yeah, we might be able to find like it, it's almost it sort of serves as an icebreaker to do right um, at the beginning sometimes. And they're to save time, sometimes there are things you can do ahead of time. Um, I know Colby was the one we had done for a while. Yeah, I mean, there's different ones and we could look at that too. I don't know, did you guys like the Colby score? I know you've probably done a lot of different ones. Well, like you're part of it for me. I was ended up talking at the case right in the middle, like the bullseye. Did you start? Yeah, I pulled it. It didn't quite hone in on that, but. But yeah, there's some birds, and I'm yeah. even take that as an action to look because we use a lot of them. I kind of figured you might, yeah, because I hear that <laughs> from them as well. Okay, um, that. I can, yeah. I mean, do you want to? Are you going to take that on then and get back to us if you have some suggestions? Sure. I'm okay. happy to. Yeah. And then we can sort of see what they call. Yeah, and I can send them a decision. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, we might be able to squeeze that in depending on the timing. Probably an emphasis on anything. The Colby one I felt was a little time intensive, you know, but it was thorough. So, like, they wanted an interview with you after to talk about your results and that kind of thing, but it took up time. So, um, okay. So, That's what cool. is that? The Colby, it was um, it was focused on how you make decisions, I think, right? So it wasn't a personality. It wasn't a, but I, a, there were a lot of people in the group that were fact finders, meaning you want the information and details. You want to do the research before you make the decision. And then there's other people who want to try and experiment first. And so they're just different. It's like your intuitive way that you approach problems, basically. So I thought I left all that. <laughs> It's always a good, um, I don't know, I think it's a good icebreaker and it makes you uh, bond a bit and see each other a little differently. Go ahead, man. Um, I would also recommend looking into some positive, positive intelligence analysis and training. Um, in my workplace, um, it's been it piloted last year and it's been extraordinarily successful. And um, there's been major changes in how people function together. 
um, through that course and how they react um, to challenging issues. So I think that that could be um, another thing to look at because it gets beyond the personality and how you communicate and it actually gets to you as an individual and what your saboteurs are, what your tendencies are personally, um, and provides tools with how to break out of those patterns that we all develop from the age of childhood on. Um, so it's, uh, I know that they do some courses that are um, short, uh, but there's also an opportunity potentially to do some much more in-depth work at the city level um, that I think would be very beneficial, not just to, Thank you. Positive intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> program, so. Okay. Um, anything else um, with our retreat that you want to possibly see on the agenda or? So we're going to revisit um, long term goals. Is there a specific way you prefer to engage on that topic? I mean, do you like having things up on the wall where we write out some ideas? Do you like um, getting stickers to put priorities? I mean, what what is this? I don't know. Are you going to present the long term goals and then we're going to discuss them, or what? I think I would send you all what I have from past retreats, and then you we would all I mean, together. Long term goals for the city of Duval. They're ones the council has come up with before. I think they yeah. mostly align with, you know, administration as well. They're pretty mostly, mostly yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's just as a council, what do you identify with? You know, I think they probably wouldn't change much, but I can send out everything we've had from the past couple of years and then you yeah, can look at it nice and make suggestions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm planning on it. I can go through my email this week and send it out soon too, so you have a chance to. Um, peruse through it. There's quite a bit, but there's also what we put together for the last biennial, the current biennial budget. You know, there's our summary page on um, Obega that talks about some of our goals as council. But I'll, I can put all that together in one email so it's easy to find um, and you got to kind of look at it. And then if you think of things before the retreat, new ideas that you don't see on the papers represented, then you can send them and we can bring that up at the retreat and talk about it. And what would that look like in a budget sense sort of type thing too? Uh, Director Thomas? Yeah, just maybe you have a lot of items and I don't know how much time you have at the retreat mm -hmm. and I've written down eight items. So I think at some point we'll want to narrow it down because we'll have to make sure that we help get the council prepared, especially if we're gonna do any sort of training. So yeah, my my goal and what I was hearing sort of agreements on would be that we are gonna devote a chunk of time, smaller chunk of time with our attorneys to talk with them, but then also maybe hash out that council procedure item. So maybe an hour for that and maybe two to three hours devoted to budget priorities. Um, if we throw in any extra thing like an icebreaker, maybe that's half an hour or, you know, if that aligns with, the idea for that would be heavy on the doing the work before the retreat, not in the retreat probably. So everything else they got brought up, um, I mean, yeah, Robert's rules, that'd be tough, but that would be easy to throw into another cow as well, honestly. So I, I think the idea was we're trying to bring out ideas, but what's the priority for that March 12th meeting would be probably, that one council procedure, have some time with, um, you know, our current and other attorney coming on, and then the um, goals for the budget or priorities for the budget. That would be the main thing. That way, the mayor and staff has that, you know, in a really timely manner. And then all the other stuff, you know, we can use up in other cows and fill in. Yeah. But I think those are the priorities. Is that any objection or does that not capture what you were thinking or that's not okay? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so that didn't take too long. So the next item then, we'll go ahead and move on, is a discussion on community engagement on the matter of fireworks in the city of Duval. So to start this conversation off, to be very clear, this is not a discussion on our personal opinions on fireworks. This is a discussion on, number one, is this something you want to talk about as a council? Number two, how would you want to engage the community and gather information? Well, you know, how would you present information to the community and also solicit feedback? What does that look like? So one thing that pops in my mind, I know, well, a long time ago, but gosh, I don't remember what year that was. There was an advisory vote um, on a ballot 
that informed the council at that time. That's what they chose to do. Um, you know, for me personally, I struggle with that a bit, you know, because what do you do if it comes back 49 and 51% or something like that? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, council would have to make a tough decision on the course for the city. So again, this is what would you want to see to have this kind of conversation about fireworks in Duval? Is this something you even want to talk about as a council? Those are kind of the two big things. Is the, do you want to? And if so, what kinds of things? Town halls, surveys, what are you looking for to engage with the community? Oh, go ahead. I think a survey would be the best way to start it. Um, and maybe, you know, get some alternatives to fireworks. Like, they have really cool things you like this now. They want to and our paper. So I'm putting that under I'm under survey, maybe the um making some bullet points of like kinds of things would you want to learn, right? Like that what what's the community's interest level in alternatives as opposed right. to where or and maybe we explain the alternatives are they don't know. Anyone else? For for me, one of the, the challenges I mean to go back here. Really important. It's like, do we want to talk about this? And I think, you know, even before whether we do a survey or town hall or solicit feedback, I mean, I'd love to, and, and I'll be transparent that I haven't dug a lot into this mm -hmm. topic myself. It's kind of it's a little bit outside out of mind, but but in in the sense of you know what is the prevailing guidance from the state? What is the guidance from the fire department? You know, with with climate change, have the general rule changed? Have we seen statistically? More accidents and fires, you know, a trend that would would drive a change in policy. Because to your earlier point, you know, Amy, there are going to be folks that fall on both sides of this. It resonates from a family, you know, um, tradition to uh, you know, sensitive children to dogs. To, I mean, there's you can all kinds of things. So, but that for me, I, I'd love to come from a, essentially having some data behind driving. A change before sort of stirring the hornet, or that's probably the wrong metaphor, but the hornet nest here with the I think the, an advisory note would be the surest way to know whether there will be fireworks and people or not. I hear you. Uh, council member, um, we did an advisory vote, but we also, I think it's important to recognize that the demographics of our community have changed significantly. Um, and we have a lot more people that live in our community that are impacted by fireworks that are not eligible to vote as good citizens. Um, so um, I can share what I heard from the community is that they want council to take action. Um, so uh, they're asking and I've had multiple uh, contacts, especially even in more so in the last four years, wanting council to take that formal action um, and vote and ban them. So just point of information, um, happy to share whatever whatever else offline, but um, I think it is important to note that we have a much larger population now that is not eligible to participate in the um, vote. Yeah. Um, I hear that point. And as well, I think the tricky thing is going to be if you do a survey, how do you restrict it to people who live inside the city? Or it doesn't get skewed dramatically by, you know, it being promoted. You know what I mean? It, it's very difficult to get a, what is it, a statistically significant survey that is um, accurately represents broadly within the community, but then also the advisory vote can be tricky some people can't vote. I don't know what the answer is, um, but I do know when we did a town hall, surprisingly, people did not show up, which was really disappointing. Um, and I know people have a lot of opinions about this. Like it, it does, mm -hmm. people not coming to the town hall does not mean people don't care. People care a lot on both sides of the issue. And um, yeah, I wish I had an answer, but <clears throat> I do know it could be tricky to just have an open survey that anyone could just, you know, people could answer it 10 times if they felt really 
about it in five different ways. Or I, I don't know how to do a survey or voting. You kind of have to pick the least um, problematic one, which anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I'll go really quick and then I'll yeah. come back to you. Um, I Yeah, so I'm not opposed as of right now, I, I can go both ways on, on an advisory vote. I don't see it as like, like essential right at the moment, but I hear the points about it. Um, survey, I like as a soft way to gauge the community's initial interest, but I hear those concerns too. I think there's a balance between adding enough questions that might make it annoying for someone to answer multiple times without making it too cumbersome for someone mm -hmm. to actually get their input. I also know, I don't know if AWC still does this, but I have been reading through some stuff and like they, oh, don't they loan out or um, the button things? We did that at one town hall before where you can, now I, I know the town hall thing was like kind of wah wah, you know, uh, it wasn't, <laughs> there was just not a big turnout. And I'm not really sure why I have to look back at the specifics of that, but if we got to a point of doing some kind of community hall, because I know we did get a big turnout for the Third Avenue one. I mean, that was really great for, you know, bring it to, you know, farmer's market, really do a lot of outreach that way um, that you could capture people in person. Now, similar problem to if you do a survey, you, how do you know you're not asking people their address or, you know, when they come in, right? So I think there's just a hope that you're mostly capturing the, the residents that people who live here now, some that might be restricted, not able to vote or some that, I don't know. So I, I think, yeah, you're right. I, I don't know what the solution is either, um, but, Survey potentially could be the lowest cost initial soft way to start getting that input from residents. Director Thomas. Add, you could do a mail survey that would only go to the community. Mm -hmm. And they could go to the link or the blog. Or it doesn't mean that people, I mean, there's still always ways to do it, right? Like, you know, where somebody can hand off the in front of the 20 people. That might be a way. And that's what we did for the public open space plan. Um, it, it is expensive. Because you're going to get them either paper copy or a QR code. And so it can be several thousand dollars to do that. That comes in Oh, I was kind of surprised to hear that there wasn't any public participation in the, in the town hall. For, because I don't remember, I don't remember hearing about it. I don't even know when it was, but uh, I think that would be a good idea too. Right? Survey, town hall, multiple ways to reach the public. Were you talking about the community one when we were looking at the emergency restriction provision? Is that the one? Because not a lot of people showed up. So yeah, it was that one, and okay. I don't know if you would describe it as town hall. Yeah, or, but yeah. yeah. It was it an was, open house. Was, it, right, yeah, I think that's more what it was called. But, I mean, it was on social media, and I, I think yeah. it was advertised, and surprisingly very, yeah. But the one other thing I have a question about is when we did the advisory vote, my understanding is we had something else on the ballot. And so adding an advisory vote was very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we just did an advisory vote without already having another item on the ballot, it would be extraordinarily, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if extraordinary is the right word, but it would definitely be more costly. I think before it was just, you know, you already have to have a special ballot for you all and then add it. Could be on par with a mailing survey, possibly at least a few thousand items. You don't have anything. Uh, just on Laura's point, um, if you did and were a for a survey, I think they can not only QR code but access code it, so mm -hmm. it's individual and then you can share it. So you get track. Yeah. So, you know, you're you to get a crack at it. Um, I think well, like ten to fifteen grand for an. Advisory vote without another. That's it. That one is. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be spending, but there yeah. might be a way to do a nice vote. But if you do it during another election, then it's less. Yeah. Is there some good idea? Would I see other hands coming across the board? And then I'm just going to add in speaking as a lower person who will have a little more speaking. Not for, you know, yeah, I mean, I was going to not necessarily circle back to my but I think one of the challenges with this topic, as with many others, I mean, it's been, been acknowledged. It's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of one of those polarized. You know, there's not a lot of folks 
there are going to be some people, you know, really don't care, but usually you're going to have the, the loudest voices on both sides are going to be the uh, majority. And, and there are, you know, other things. I know the number of the churches or the church, I mean, there's revenue impact. There's a broader thing. I was just going to say, I mean, for me, both the surveys and it, it does provide a pulse. I think you have to be really careful to couch it in an advisory. This is not, you're not voting because one, it's not always necessary representative. And then at the end of the day, I think any decision the council makes needs to be based on more um, qualitative. I mean, to some, that's why I kind of come back to the data sometimes. Is there a safety? Is there a fire? Is there a, um, but, um, it's kind of one of those topics where there's not going to be winners per se. So that was my only concern about the survey, particularly when you don't have consistent turnout. It's not necessarily like a bond or something where you're you're going to get pretty broad. Um, um, just just to, again, if we if we go that road, just to be very careful to look at the sample size and we all up in terms of how we figure that in, in when we serve the next steps because we're again lucky that. And regardless of the path we did not get a sample that fully represents the on this one. So a clarification on what are you are you saying like before you would want to survey the community, you would maybe want to have like the fire district come and speak with us or some kind of informational presentation to start it off? Or I think my my point is particularly as based on the cost that Director Thomas and Director Lynn just be acknowledged is we either need to be prepared to take action. I, I wouldn't be up for doing ten thousand, you know, a ten thousand yeah. dollar investment unless we knew we were prepared to take some action or that was in sort of directional direction for guidance, you know, the direction we're going. And I think based on that, having that body of knowledge in terms of whether it is the fire district, I know they kind of make the call in that given moment around burn fan conditions. But this is, I think, broader than that. This isn't the, the binary we're going to offer them or not based on current safety conditions. This is more almost a quality of life issue, you know, how we're going to, to make a, a policy change. And I think it would be good to have that information in hand before we send out anything, particularly if it's a low cost. You know, we have a resource we can leverage. We've got you know, someone either at a state or county level, if we have other cities that have already gone through this process, there's learnings that they can have that kind of growth mm -hmm. where I was looking to. Okay. So I don't know how easy that is to, to sort of set up, but just making that that lighter investment before we, we do something, mm -hmm. you know, that either has a cost or work, we can open up, you know, once it's out there that we're, I mean, yeah. obviously we're talking about it now, so it's not. Right. Uh, and, um, Topic, but I, I think coming into it is going to start. And along with being informed, if we could just kind of do a little paragraph at the beginning of the survey saying, okay, so this is what we know how many fires have started here by fireworks, how many injuries happen here by fireworks, you know, so those facts are front and center, mm -hmm. and how many, you know, deaths are affected with PTSD with fireworks, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, didn't have to write. You know, they've got some facts there. It's not just you know opinion. They can be. Right. So the the end result of, of this survey advisory vote is going to be either there'll either be a motion to ban fireworks and wall or there won't be based on the results of what we decided to do. I think my personal hope with a survey would be, and this is the beauty of a survey versus an advisory vote, it's you can ask a little more complicated questions. So for me personally, you know, you see some communities with height restrictions, they don't allow aerial fireworks, but maybe they still, they allow a little more than sparklers, maybe they still allow the fountains. And I know some people would want to do a sweeping no, and I know there's complications from, you know, uh, an enforcement perspective for sure. There's a lot of factors in this whole thing, but I think that for me personally, what I would want to see from a survey would be kind of delving into that and finding out what people's real view is. Because if you just ask, say yes or no, you will get, you know, two buckets. But I think there's a lot in between there, and we might be surprised. I mean, we've definitely had some surveys where I thought the community wanted something, and oh yeah, they don't, or maybe they want it but not there, or you know, so. 
for me, it would be relatively, you know, low cost in terms of staff time um, and other factors way. And I like the idea if we can look into the code restriction to try and make it a little more, you know, so somebody can't go in and answer it 20 times or something like that. But um, yeah, so I mean, from, from my perspective, that is a great place to start. And then that would give counsel what, yeah, like what you're saying, how's this end? I mean, you might see that people are like, I hate every single kind and I mm -hmm. want to pull out and, you know, and you might see people kind of mixed, which is what I'm, my guess would be. Um, but, and they might say, hey, I kind of want something in between or I feel like the emergency, you know, uh, thing is enough. Um, for really dry years. I don't, I'm sure we're going to see that trending more <laughs> every year, though. So I think there's a lot, of, and I like what Ron said, too, is that information point, you know, and I always want to be careful about making sure people have information without it crossing the line and trying to persuade them a certain way on the survey, too. So I want to make sure they have good information that really this is coming forward because every year on some level, I think this last year was a pretty light year for me personally, though I know I think the city did get emails about fireworks. You know, in general, you will get emails every year about like, you know, or there were fires or something like that. So I think you have your data and then really though, we're bringing this forward because we wanna be responsive to our community. And we don't really know. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably still fairly mixed. I don't know what side of the line it falls on yet. So. Um, some kind of action, or maybe we see such a result from the survey that we're like, I don't think this constitutes us doing anything because it's not clear. I mean, but I think it would be a good show to say we're we're trying to listen, we're trying to figure out what our community wants, and I think that would be the result. It's just making sure that they know we're trying <laughs> to figure out what exactly they want. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, make some kind of decision, whether it's to do nothing or to do something or something in between. That kind of all right. So is everyone on board with some kind of survey? Did you raise your hand? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, in general, is everyone on board with some kind of survey and then like some information and fact finding type stuff? And go ahead. Yeah, I would be on board with a survey. I also do like be super careful that no one who gets the survey feels like we're being persuasive in our facts right. that yeah. come forward, even if they're <laughs> legitimate facts. Yeah. Sometimes it can rub people the wrong way that yeah. they feel like they're being led to a certain answer. Um. And I just, I would want people to feel like we were disrespecting them mm -hmm. by trying to leave them as well. Yeah, anyway, I have, I hope that makes sense. Um, oh, what's my good? Oh, I know. I think I saw that you had posted something. Mm -hmm. Did you get any? Not yet. No, okay. I have, yeah, um, I have a council member, um, WordPress. And I put together this like ponder prompt type thing. And it's a form that goes directly to my city email. And so if somebody fills it out, it will say, what the topic was. And so I could interchange the topic, that kind of thing. So I, I had some questions laid out already that are things I've been thinking about, knowing that it had been brought up and say, hey, does this council want to look at it, consider it? So um, no, I haven't gotten any responses. And if I do, I'll for sure. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Director Thomas, would you like us to get an estimate cost on the survey for city limits? Like a mailing one or? Mailing one. I think it would be, would that be helpful to council to at least know what the number is for the mailing survey, or are you only interested in a digital? I think I would like, yeah, I, I think I would like, potentially if it could sit on a postcard and be the, how much difference does it cost to send a postcard versus uh, one sheet in an envelope? Uh, it's, it's not a ton. Not a ton of rent. Right? It's not a ton. Okay. But then you would definitely push it off from paper, you know, like from mailing it off to us, but just do the QR code. And the it's not, the postage is probably going to be a lot less than the actual. Because my preference would be to do a survey that's not just online, that ends up with people. I'd rather it end up physically a sheet to remind them to do it and not just end up on social media. That's my plan. Yeah, this would be definitely like it would be mailed out to like all of our community, which would include our business community, or you could fake out the business community so we would make those two choices mm -hmm. as well. And then we would want if the council is interested, we would look at the limitation where it's only going to work for probably one per mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I would um, definitely be interested to know the cost 
and that way we could weigh it um, because I don't know um, until I know what that number is. But I definitely agree that the you know it is so costly, but like some people just aren't on online, you know, and I, I want to make sure it's inclusive um, at all levels. So um, that's tough. But I think having the cost would help us figure it out, at least know that. And then, I mean, does so first, yeah, does council, reiterating Director Thomas's question, does council want to know the cost of a mail survey? Just to know it. I think that's a pretty nominal mm -hmm. time investment. And then what about just the knowing the cost of an advisory vote? Because I know some people said that's interesting. But it would be helpful to know how expensive that can be. Is that something you would want to find out, or are you just not interested at all? I think we've heard an estimate. Okay. All right. Don't you have? Uh, so last year we paid twenty eight thousand dollars as a city for all of our elections last year, and so depending on if you put it, like say you obviously you wouldn't put on a special election because that would be very costly. <laughs> But if you put it in August, your deadline is May. Um, if you put it for November, uh, so, it's August. Yeah, so May is for the August, and then August is the deadline for um, the November election. And to be realistic about it as well, because I remember when we put um, the transportation benefit district thing on the ballot, there's quite a bit of work that goes into putting something on. So, for example, doing it this year, if that's the direction the council wanted, would not be feasible because it's not budgeted for and all those other things and just the workload of that. So, I mean, is that correct, right? Like, realistically, it would be next year or something like that if we wanted something to go on a ballot. I think, you know, that would be a choice, you know, of the yeah. council. I mean, you could do a budget on a private survey or for either one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just workload wise, it just seems like it would be a little unreasonable for. Did you have anything? Yeah, what year was the advisory vote? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. before the wall fields and technology levies. So it was um, 2016, 15 or 16. Um, like 20 years ago. But I can say the opposition to having fireworks a lot of people is on the phone. So I, and the risk is that much higher, significantly higher. Um, when that advisory vote, occurred, we didn't have to have, uh, we didn't have an emergency ordinance to allow us to ban fireworks if the fire indices met a certain threshold. We've actually had to do that now, um, and we've had to evaluate it on multiple years, um, and that alone takes a significant amount of staff time and cost, um, especially last year when we were not getting um, home information from the fire district at the time. Uh, it actually created a significant uh, amount of cost and staff time and that week leading up to Fourth of July, um, because that ordinance does require the um, fire official in charge make the recommendation based on scientific data. And any other thoughts or comments about this? So it sounds like we might be in agreement to start with the survey to get an estimate on what that could look like mailing it out versus strictly online. Um, and then go from there. All right. No, nope, we don't need to make a motion here. In cows, it's pretty much done. It's just made by consensus. And <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, let's see. We still have some time left. Um, of course, there's always the written reports. You can check out your planning calendar and see what's coming up. Um, there's a summary report on the survey about our park trail open spaces and then the request for proposal to the municipal fiscal sustainability plan. Um, that's my math. One thing, question about one of the reports. I guess I'm not sure about the report, but on the um park trails and open spaces, the comp plan and the park trails and open spaces advisory committee. Do I ran into someone who applied and they hadn't heard anything, which Besides acknowledgement that they received it and they weren't sure what the timeline was, is that something we know at this point? The timeline is for yeah, us. Can you actually talk about it? Oh, the department. Oh, okay. we're having Yeah. I'll so wait. yeah, I, I guess I was wondering then with our leftover time, did we want to take care of either the mayor or city administrator's report or council reports or anything like that? 
I'm assuming the de departmental is the city administrator, right? Okay. Do you want to just do the city administrator part and get that off and save your report for the next meeting? Or um, I can give my report okay. this meeting. Sure, sure. we've got time. But yeah, which is fine. Yeah, we still have those. Did you want to bring out the departmental report? I think the mayor's going to do her report, and then okay. actually, or let's do the city. Okay, yeah. Now. If you want to start with that okay. first. Uh, we're just going to give the community development update. So for the building department, uh, we're continuing to work on in what we call enforcement follow-up. Sometimes it can take quite a while to do enforcement. We have a couple of fairly serious ones for health life safety, ones that are you know that might be you know more minor, like sign code or a setback issue or a uh, small like on site structure issue. Um they may take longer than the health life safety ones, but we have a couple that are challenging and that we get through them fairly timely. Um, and we'll report back if, if there are any issues. Uh, our review turnarounds are starting to really click and get a lot faster. And I would say that really because of our building permit module, we're getting them reviewed faster, issuing them faster, but it's really important, especially like even for economic development. I can't remember what school was asking me what pizza place is going into town and we're going to get a seat. So we were able to review that within a couple of days or two before we had the software. It could take us a couple of weeks. And so it's it's been a really good tool. But as you know, we prepared Title 10 code amendments. That is for the building code. We're getting closer. We'll have um, we have it on the agenda this evening. I will tell you that we are not asking for a decision tonight because we're still awaiting. Um, State Building Code Council on legislative possibly issue, and so stay tuned for that. There's still, I would say, some on whether that date is going to be official on March 15th, or whether it will get deferred, or some portion of it will get deferred. And we did update our fee schedule, which is a big deal, but it does take manual input. Um, as you can see, we have issued permits, and we try to give you like a dashboard at least once a month that shows kind of a couple of years we get a little bit of a trend line. So you can see, you know, we're still in a, in a little bit of a higher year than we normally would. The inspections is definitely pretty high, and my guess is we'll continue to see that trajectory go because we just have so much um, under construction. Question? Yeah, on the other slide, your permits, your bar grapher, is that? Okay, those are months, January. Okay. Yeah, that's just so the other bar graph on the right hand side is just repeat versus issued by month. So you can kind of see how mm -hmm. it you know, can bounce around. If the building code do actually being in March, we'll probably see a flush of permits into the system trying to meet the, the new code. Uh, current development, uh, like we said, lots of inspections for both the departments. Uh, we're continuing to do building permit reviews on a weekly basis. Um, we follow up. This is the time of the year where we're still doing a lot of like landscape and mitigation follow up. Um, and we created a new process internally for those both inspections, how we record them, so that anybody that calls after us can easily see where we're at in the process for whether it's maintenance or performance. Um, the planning commission reviewed and approved a new wall sign. Anything that's over 100 square feet goes to divine review. And the planning commission included we had one of those. Um, as you may have noticed, that one of the buildings at 65 degrees, um, building five is ready. And we have two occupancy of uh, the first three units of involving five. There's still two that they're they're working on. Uh, we are uh, we received the application and um, it is for a daycare of 
Um, it's the park adjacent from our work in Schaefer Park. It's like, oh, brother, um, we met with the farm brewery to go over their follow-up questions. And even since I did this uh, last week, we had a meeting with somebody that would like to do a fairly large indoor um, athletic facility off of Big Rock Road. So we're going to be meeting with 1,200 here in the coming weeks. And public work is actually going to be part of that thing because we have uh, utilities that are already set for that area and making sure that we can make sure everything fits. And because there's five lots there, we have a development agreement to require certain prospects to be developed out. So we have to make sure we go through our internal work. We're kind of up. And that's going to be one of the first, and then I'll call it a big project for them. And they might need more than one lot, which would be awesome to do. Because they are required to build a minimum of 50,000 square feet of non residential space at a certain time. So this would help them get right there. And we are going to be on, well, we actually are on board and make money, but here are going to be, we'll see the team on boarding the commissioner. Uh, we're almost finished with the mobile food unit. Uh, we have probably a lot of questions on their DVDs, as you might know, and that's part of what code enforcement that we've been doing. Uh, our department will be going back a presentation in May to look at um, to kind of bring some of the facts and data forward. Uh, we actually went to a seminar, webinar last month that was just specifically on short term rentals. Um, there's more about you know kind of market trends, where we're going, where they're not. Not necessarily as much about policy, but it did help us understand why we're getting more clear the world fair that information is good. Um we're done with the 2024 docket. Uh, we are doing continued work from our consultant for both our comprehensive plan and PCR plan. So for example, right now we're working through um, the draft. Survey that will go out to the community of plan. Um, we'll probably be done, my guess is, by the end of this week or early next week. And then that would then go out with probably about a week after that. Um, we did review, obviously, the press results from the consultant. We're working on the final um, memo for that, but you did see we kind of have like a two page like, summary that we're going to post to our public plan page. And then once we get the memo summary, then then we'll post we'll post that there as well. And then uh, okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, boards and commissions, I won't go into it completely, but we have been participating on boards and commissions that are back up and running. Like you get a little roll like towards the end of the year, and then you kind of jump right back into them. I think our biggest challenge right now is we just have not been able to go to all of these. You know, kind of advisory group meetings because we just don't have the staff bandwidth right now. So we're, we're going to try to figure that out and see what we can do moving forward. But it's just a really big policy here. Um, you can see that we did a short term, and that is actually a picture of a couple of weeks ago um, for building live. So this is our first R25 project live in the field. Welcome. Uh, the PQS focus group meeting is on issue 26. And thank you to the planning commissioners and council members that have either been you know, volunteered or recruited. And so, um, Councilmember Member McHenry and Council Member for Planning Commissioner Bradley, Bradley are the advisory committee members. Uh, the first meeting is a focus group meeting, and there's two focus group meetings on the 26th that we're excited about. Um, our park plan community open house is scheduled for 326. And so that's exciting as well. Uh, the conference of plan survey will go out in a few weeks. Uh, the uh, comp plan committee will begin its work in late March. And so an email will go out to everybody that's on that community as well. But we do have a um, council member rep and a planning commissioner rep as well. And they're the latest one. So we're excited. It's going to start. Yeah. Get busy for the department and for our community, really. Good evening, everyone. Steve Public Works. 
I don't think Laura has quite the better range. She already did it, so it's not like it's been not with you. He's just going to get it. The deer. Uh, yeah, especially with next week. Months. Uh, okay, update on public works. Uh, we'll have the final scope and fee for the Big Rock Ball Field Phase 2 design in the next packet for the fifth. Um, we are picking a um, design alternate based on the preliminary work we did. So that'll be part of our discussion, like making sure that's where we want to go. We had our consultant review all the PCOS stuff that's ongoing and do a quick level of service study to understand the needs of the community relative to national standards. So pretty good discussion. Um, so that'll be in there. Uh, flower pots, I didn't hear all the questions earlier, but I met today with Seth Thomas from the high school and the horticulture class, not just the club. Um, so they're very willing and able to do some work. Um, timing is going to be super tight relative to Duval days, so they can't commit to anything prior to Mother's Day weekend, which is their big fundraiser with when they do all the pots. But he said everything comes Monday. After that, we'll get them done. They'll build them that week. They can harden them off in their garden center, and then we can grab them the week prior to probably the Friday prior to Duval days. Saturday, so we would have them up for a week, and it's an even more, more complicated weekend. Memorial Day is the Saturday or the Monday prior to Duval Day days the next weekend. So it's going to be pretty tight um, if we want to use the community as, as a resource. Uh, he's super gung ho about it and has no qualms about it. We talked a lot of details today. So um, hope I spoke from that a hardware store, and we are working on what that will look like. Um, if you didn't know Seth Thomas, the instructor up there, he was the flower world manager of like putting it all together for nine years, seven years. But yeah, he was he's in the game for sure. Um, it was a really a, a great meeting. Um, still a lot to work on. Uh, he was pretty opposed to a formal metal frame that we would then infill. He thought it was just simpler to go with the pre-pressed pots that they are made of fibers. You know, he's pretty like very open and <laughs> I love it. Um, he said, you know, you're just wasting money because you're gonna cover it with massive hanging plants. Like that's our goal is to have it droop and that's the style. So he was very uh like you need to say anything because well, no, we haven't bought anything yet. That was the plan, but you know, plans can change. It's the first go around. I am more than happy to try the pressed fiber pots. If they don't work out, we haven't lost them. Maybe you would have had to have had them anyway in a metal frame back did. So we'll mention that to Cynthia when she gets back and we'll start working on all this. But yeah, the hardware store will supply the plants at cost. I'm not super concerned about quotes on that. We'll do some quotes just to have uh, handy, but they're they getting the cost through the markup, and uh, that's on board with that. Working for Liz, um, you know, it'll be yeah, good experience. Um, yeah. He's very young, though, like I said, done before. He has friends in the, in the business on both sides, I'll get to the private side and, and building and selling, and then the city side and deploying um, from some of his contacts. So that was a good meeting today. Um, let's see. The TBD report is on the website. That was the, for folks that has to go up every year, so that's on our TBD page, Transportation Benefit District, to summarize the annual financing. Um, Ninety percent of plans are on the way for one forty second phase two, so work on SEPA and getting that all prepped for the summertime construction window that just extends from two seventy eight on the alignment of what's turning into one forty second for the. Rounds the curve from the east uh, down to two sides there. Um, sewer system smoke testing is on schedule for Thursday. Uh, we have been, if you have checked the page out on our website, um, you know, we have said it is you know, homeless responsibility. We haven't committed anything either way. We'll see how 
all of this shakes out uh, once we identify where all the smoke is coming from. But we're under the final stages in preparation to find all the manholes and have access to the lids. And Ben and Benny have been working uh, all over town from Stella, Maine, up to uh, the Orioles. Have we done this before? Uh, we the last time we did it was like 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We've had it on the list for a long time. I mean, okay, we just want to get through our list, and it's an important endeavor. And you know, processing raw rainwater at the Whistler Treatment Plant is a waste of money. So we're we're excited to see what happens. That zone is currently saying based on the measurements of quality area responsible for 65% of the running money. So that's a lot in one zone. Yeah, uh, big money is it's on an intercepting storm feature in the sewer system. There's not a lot of other ways. It would be pretty consistent in Old Town that they were all like 10% along the way, but to have one at such a large number over all the other zones that were all built in the same area, something's it shouldn't be. Um, furniture selecting, we should have a contract for furniture supply procurement in the packet for the fifth as well. Those are tight timelines to get it deployed and onto and into the building you know, within eight weeks. Uh, with solicit quotes, I think we're working with a, a pretty good group. Uh, they're very helpful and you know it's going well. We had a nice outing with all the Staff between public building and public building and plan. It's another even. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that you don't really realize. So it was uh, a little overwhelming. Um, but even the blood sugars were low, we made it through. And the good ladies who were helping us out, our PMs, were super impressed. Like one that was a big group, two, you guys didn't fight, and nobody's like. Went in and put their foot down and said, There's no way. And I'm so that or the other. So it's fairly common, apparently, when you bring larger than five groups in. So anyway, we'll have some information next time on that. Next call. Uh, so we haven't heard the cultural commission been working with staff on signage for the parks. So we do, and our fortunate uh, two of our commissioners uh, for their you know, professional career are craft artists. So they're very into this. Um, I was there for the first meeting and not the second, but to the tone of like font, size of font, like a hobby on roadway trips. Like it was very like do all like it was just low-key, but they were very, very into it. So this is what they came up with. So we staff gave a few that we had seen as actuals and provided them to the group, and they created this. So the colors are straight off of our current color palette. Um, nothing is new. There is a sign difference, obviously, in the left and the right. A larger park will get a bigger sign. A smaller park, like a pocket park, um, will get a smaller sign. So um, we are working on finalizing this. Obviously, there will be a cruise ship, but we are using the standard um, nationwide park uh, emblems for our parks. And that's the intent right there. So, I thought they did a great job. They were very engaged and like super interesting. It was, uh, it was a good experience. Next slide. Uh, a couple of road project updates for you folks. This doesn't directly affect us, but this is 1.4 next week, closed 28.9. It says business hours. Um, as you notice, if you drop by and it's posted. What I found, if you go to the website, it says differently. So it's not even in the right month. <laughs> um, so a couple of discrepancies, Jason has been in communication. We will try to ask him which is the right date. Next week, 2021, or March. So uh, they're cleaning that for job. That's what I was gonna ask. It's yeah. like, you know, they're investing all those colors and then they yeah. kind of, even the last time they cleaned it, they didn't do sort of a, Hundred percent, and then there's some. Group. I didn't know if it was graffiti or they were testing paint colors. It looks like a combination of they're going to clean it, but yes, they were. I mean, covering graffiti and then testing paint colors, from what I could see. Uh, so yeah, that's next. Well, it says out in the world on sign next week. The website says next month. 
Uh, next slide. Uh, as we begin to go north in April, they are starting a project at the 203 and High Rock Road interchange. That will be the kidney bean double roundabout. Um, if you go to their website, I didn't have a link in here. It is, uh, they have a, a video model, back thing. It's going to be quite a while. Uh, but so four four day closure in April, and then they will be working through the summer. So I, I assume the four day closure in April is to get an effective bypass in the area, so they can also travel car through and then work. And then it says they should be done by the end of fall. And then last but not least, if you haven't yet heard, uh, Windmill Duval Road is closing this summer in the valley between West and Valley Road and 203. So uh, next slide. Oh, so, sorry, that was it. Uh, so yeah, not the main bridge, but the smaller bridge, which is the bridge nonetheless, right after River Road, right west of River Road, redecking. That's what we know. They didn't reach out to us. We found this on our own. I'm a little disappointed. So. We have a lot of Mayor, I was just going to say, um, I'm hopeful that they are coordinating with Snohomish County on this, considering that over 75% of our daily traffic comes from Snohomish County um, and rerouting traffic. So, um, you need assistance for the government relations contact. Let me know. Yeah, Jason is working with their uh, okay. communications person. So mm -hmm. we, like I said, we found it. I don't know. Okay. I was just going to ask you, like, you know, last year we had the yard closed and the closure was one of the reasons why our food truck didn't open up because there wasn't enough traffic. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have also music in the park, it's, it's longer to get home. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's hard to use a small closure. Yeah, I also heard it uh, be back from a very large local business that looked greatly impacted on last summer. And that wasn't even a closure of the bridge, it was just a closure of the windmill do well. Um, also, we have a lot of events, especially like the launch, the new event. Mm -hmm. um, and if all like when it was when the Duval was closed, people could still get around Duval. They could cross the mid bridge and take West and And so now all traffic will be using the coming south, unless, like the mayor mentioned, that there could be some kind of detour that starts ahead. Like, I don't know if that other roundabout project could be done and they could send people over back there. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is. I don't know what goal the city could take, but I feel like there needs to be some very strong, um, if possible, advocacy because, I mean, just for our local businesses, our events, just the quality of life this summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, with both of those projects happening at once, that traffic really has to, um, <clears throat> it's going to naturally, in theory, filter across the valley to start with um, because people are not going to want to be stuck in the back of um, at Topol Road or on Topol yeah, um, High Bridge. Um, but, uh, you know, there are multiple ways to get to that cross valley way. Um, the roads are not uh, conducive to heavy traffic, but um, I'm hopeful that King County will uh, be responsive to that and, and perhaps um, Washdock will be more responsive, um, reaching out to them to coordinate with the county. Who knows? And another question we asked when I was with them. I would just reiterate that it's not going to take this because it hurts from all the reasons. It yeah. kills me. I was already slow, and that just was like getting me off. One thing I was going to add, and I didn't drop to it, but you know, they're going to be doing a major crime in Overland on 203 towards me this summer as well. Um, I just wanted to chime in really quick. I, I know that, you know, when you have a lot of area that you have all these, you know, improvement and construction projects that they kind of cycle on through, but I'm not sure that they're seeing what ends up happening for us to be, this is closed for a chunk of every summer or, you know, worst case scenario. So it'd be nice if, um, I know some things really need to get done and you know we have to do this now, but 
you know, if they could for this stretch prioritize trying to do more of those things or take that feedback in the future of like really trying to condense it to this is the summer, it's really shut down and we're doing all this stuff that, that for some areas might be more helpful than like, okay, well, oh, this summer it's going to be closed down too because we need to do this little section. And I mean, that's really, it's really hurtful to a lot of businesses. So. If for my notes, but uh, you know, just right now, um, spoke to see any man on like the whole thing. So, Ben came up with seven, I think, and you know, it will be interesting. So, I assume some people provide some help. I had talked to um, Cynthia and I had asked, you know, is it something that like in terms of money, because I, of course, you guys are handling it if they're allowed to do that, the permission type thing. But, you know, out of the economic development fund, I mean, how much would it really be to provide some money for both? I mean, that is an economic development. Flowers are pretty, we're doing flower baskets, that kind of thing. I mean, what, a couple hundred dollars or something? It couldn't be very much. And so if it's something that, you know, we could add to the agenda or just if you need head nod consensus or something like that from council to get it going, because I know it is time dependent. Um, I, you know, we could definitely bring that up during the council meeting when, if you need some kind of action to just green light the money from that fund. Yeah, I don't know much at all about it other than they want to do something. I know the valley doesn't count, right? That's not our property. We have the entrances in town, which mm -hmm. maintained in the past with some sort of, uh, you know, voluntary effort. So, mm -hmm. Not opposed to anything in the okay. I don't know much. Okay. In case you weren't forwarded the email, um, the the reason they were asking specifically and kind of time with them the essence is that future farmers of America week, the last week of February. So maybe next week. And so they were trying to coordinate something around that time. And I don't know how critical it is that they do an event that exact time frame, but I think that was impressive. Left with both. I think you need to get them in before the rest more man too much. Yeah. So um yeah, and the other thing I was thinking of economic development money was I don't know if that there's also we have the um the Boy Scout or community projects money for community enhancement stuff. I don't know if that is something that I don't know exactly how that works with staff besides how that's been for a lot of accounts. Uh, probably either or any other topic. I know I spoke to CM now about the overlook in Depot Park, mm -hmm. about what it, what it is versus what it could be. Um, I do have an Eagle Scout working on a different project, but I had another kid reach out. So he seems to be a little less communicative, but that one's on my work for him to consider. Otherwise, yeah, it can be built. But I don't have an estimate on lumber, but lumber alone is going to be a pretty significant figure. But it would be nice. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, Council Member I think I might have missed the answer or didn't understand the answer, but on. So when you said that there was a focus group meeting on the 26th, does that mean anyone who had been selected for the PTOS? Advisory committee would have already been told. So that's a really the question. There, okay. that is not the advisory committee. That's okay. the focus group, oh. which are our users mm -hmm. in one of the groups in the school district, mm -hmm. and then the other one is our environmental and tribe. So those are the two focus mm -hmm. groups. We gather information from them at one meeting, mm -hmm. and then once we're done with that, then we're going to push up our peak to us committee and essentially we're taking the, the vast majority of those that applied. I mean we had a really I feel like we had a really good turnout and we wanted to keep it you know around between 10 no more than 15 advisory committee members that's a lot to manage and we've got multiple projects going on. So that's what we're going to see for the PQS and then the same for the comp plan. Okay so they probably know if they were selected in the next uh, they they will know is um, after we have our meeting next week. Okay. Our, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you want to do your mayor's report? It's like sure. What do you think? It shouldn't take long. Okay. okay. Um. So, uh, just quick update: Association of Washington Cities um committees are starting to ramp up for uh, preparing for the next <clears throat> legislative cycle. Um. So I just got the notice today. The policy state committee statement committee um is 
for me uh, in my role as leadership, I'll be serving on that committee. We have the uh, Sound Cities Association Strong Mayors meeting this morning. We had several new strong mayors um, at the table, so that was really nice to see. Um, it's really funny how uh, every single one has come from council as well. Um, so actually, of those in attendance today, all of us came from council before uh, coming to the strong mayor position. Um, so we had a very fruitful discussion welcoming them um, and helping them identify, um, you know, things that they may want to do or not do, etc. Um, as well as have a robust discussion on some of the challenges um, and positive things that we're all facing in our communities right now. Um, the, uh, I've noticed the Sound Cities Association um, next networking event is March 6th in Renton. Um, so John Taylor, who was the former director of Department of Local Services in King County, um, who was the first director of Department of Local Services, has now been appointed as the Department of Natural Resources and Parks Director of Queen County. Um, so that's a big shift, but he will be speaking at that um, at that event, as well as Josh Brown, the Executive Director of Puget Sound Regional Council and others. Um, so definitely, I think uh, Claudia, Council Member Claudia Del Ducci will be one of those as well. Um, so hope to see uh, a lot of council attend if possible. Um, and then uh, we've also got notice that the next SVJ meeting is March 26th. Um, so it was nice to see um, Council Member Naplin and for the first time, Council Member who felt um, at the last meeting in Carnation. Um, and uh, finally, I of course had the opportunity to attend the Association of Washington City's Legislative Action Conference a couple of weeks ago. Um, that was a, a fantastic conference significant number of the newly elected officials attended. For those that don't know, um, of local governments in Washington state, last November alone, 24% of all elected officials are now brand new elected officials. Um, so there's some steep learning curves, but the newly elected charts, um, the event did sell out. Um, lots of opportunity for networking. Um, all of the people that I met are very interested in learning and in particular learning from um, people that have been around a while. Um, so that's also really encouraging. Some years you get a crop of people that come in believing they know everything. And that's usually when the challenges happen at local government um, is when people don't take the time to learn the system, learn the staff, learn their roles and responsibilities. Um, so that's a huge encouragement um, despite the uncertainty when you get a new crop of folks like that. Um, as part of that, um, I had the opportunity to speak with the uh, director of the Emergency Military Division, um, Dr. Robert Isabel, uh, Dr. Uh, director of Robert Isabel, um, briefly, uh, but one of the items that um, was a topic of discussion is fire risk, and in particular, Western Washington fire risk. Um, so his comment was, we are one event away from being a paradise California in Washington, Western Washington. Um, and noting that Duval is one of the highest risk communities in Washington, Western Washington for that type of event. So um, as we move forward with some of our other policy discussions, um, particularly regarding fireworks and that high risk um, activity, um, I'm hoping that we will be able to bring in some information from the state on that as well um, to inform those discussions and inform those risks and factors that they're seeing as um, really um, impactful to our communities, uh, especially with the potential loss of um, life and structures if an event like that occurs. Um, he also did emphasize that uh, it's not just your fire department or the state's responsibility or the county's responsibility, the city has a primary responsibility and role in making sure that we're not just prepared but are able to respond when those events do happen. Um, because they are happening in Western Washington, and um, unless a significant amount of funding is spent to mitigate against the impacts, um, we will um, see those events worsen over the next several years. Um, which, of note, uh, Climate Commitment Act funds from the uh, Carbon Tax Initiative could, in theory, fund all of the issues surrounding um, managing climate change, but there is an initiative um, that is qualified signatures wise for the ballot that is likely to take all of that funding away, uh, which if that funding does go away, um, we'll be on the hook for all of that uh, funding and preparation um, and uh, 
would could significantly impact our ability to protect our community going into the future. So really important and impactful. It's amazing how much a conversation can can um, bring up. But um, there you have it. And with that, I have no um, additional reports this evening. Great. Any questions for the mayor? Okay. So with that, you know, we have ten minutes before council. I, we could probably just save council reports for the meeting if anyone has any. Um, and we'll go ahead and adjourn it at six fifty p.m. So everyone can take a break. Tuesday, February 20th, 2024, Duval City Council meeting to order. Would you please rise and join me in the flag? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Certainly. Mayor Oberlander? Here. Mayor for Ben McDander? Here. Mr. Eisenman. Mr. Schaefer. Mr. Murphy. Here. Mr. Tuffle. Here. Ms. Tavlin. Here. Ms. Bufel. Here. We have a quorum. Under additions and corrections to the agenda, um, after discussion with the city administrator, I would like to propose removal of the discussion of the public records policy from the agenda this evening. Um, the city administrator has set a deadline for a council response of February 12th. Um, responses were not received until Saturday, and then a whole other list of responses and amendment requests today. Um, I'm well aware the city administrator is out of town. Um, I did talk to her on her vacation today, um, and her request and concurrence was that this be pulled from the agenda um, this evening, uh, especially because there are um, points about um, discussion of the role of the city administrator in this process and this policy. Um, so uh, neither of us feel it's appropriate for discussion for that to occur without her being present. Um, are there any objections to that? Okay. Seeing none, are there any other additions or corrections to the agenda? Yeah. I'd like to move to excuse council member Schaefer's absence. He let us know he would not be here today. Thank you. All right, any other additions or corrections to the agenda? Councilmember Nathan? Did we decide if we needed to make a motion or do anything to get the amendment to hold? I was not for that. May I present? If I could just elaborate, I, we there was discussion at the CAL and asking if we needed to bring up to set a cap or pass money from the Economic Development Fund if we wanted to provide money for the, the FFA group to purchase bulbs to plant on city property on some of the corners, or maybe the main issue is the permission aspect, and there would be such a phenomenal amount of money. Um, so if it's only a few hundred dollars, I would that is something that we can absorb within the administration's budget um, or public works. However, the bigger issue is um, permission and liability um, and, and planning bug bulbs in center places and what have you. And so um, I believe that that final decision is best left to Director Lunaszewski after the conversation with the FF speaker. Yeah, I just thought it was really the financial portion of whether yeah, it is only a few hundred dollars we have, we have, we have discretionary that can be moved around. Thank you. Um, do we have a motion to approve this evening's council agenda? I can move. Second. Great. All those in favor of approving this evening's council agenda, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, on comments for the audience, I'm just going to read into the record um, our updated rules on public comments. So during before we ask for public comment from the audience. Um, during the designated public commentary period within city council meetings, individuals are allotted a three minute speaking duration, while representatives of organizations may address for up to five minutes. 
Before presenting, kindly disclose your full name and in presidential affiliation with the city. It is strongly advised by the city to submit verbal comments in written form to expedite subsequent correspondence. Written comments must be received by the city clerk's office no later than noon on the meeting day, addressed at PO Box 1300, Duval, Washington 98019, or to 15535 Main Street Northeast, or uh, sent by email. Please be aware that the city council, its boards, and commissions solely entertain public comments from attendees present at the meeting in person. The council does not accept handouts or printed material during public comment sessions. Information intended for the mayor or the city council should be directed to the city clerk who will disse disseminate it following the submitter's instructions. Upon receipt, the city clerk will receive written public comments and subsequently furnish them to the city council or the relevant board or commission. It's important to note, however, that written comments will not be orally presented during the council or applicable board or commission meetings. Instead, they will be integrated into the meeting's minutes. With that, if we have any members of the audience that would like to speak, please uh, feel free to approach the podium. You have five minutes, or three to five minutes, depending on your organization or in. Hi, everyone. My name is Kira Avery. I'm the executive director at the Snow Valley Senior Center in Carnation. I believe the city clerk forwarded my uh, comments and our annual report to you earlier today. And so I just kind of wanted to come up here to basically say thank you to the city of New Ball to the, for the support um, of the Snow Valley Senior Center. So the Senior Center is the only place serving older adults in the lower Snoqualmie Valley. And the funds received the Google Human Services Grant in 2023 were spent on direct food and supplies costs to support the meal program at the Snow Valley Senior Center. This program uh, provides made from scratch meals Monday through Friday for those over 60 and it's a suggested donation of $5. And in 2023, the Snow Valley Senior Center saw 100, excuse me, 1,464 individuals uh, with 189 identifying that they live in Duval. In 2023, we served 9,632 meals to 402 unique individuals, 65 of which identified that they live in Duval slavery. Although we do recognize that uh, there were more residents of Duval that we served, however, these are the ones that we have complete demographics for. The Duval Human Services Grant made it possible for us to provide these meals to local seniors, and it empowers older adults to be an integral part of the Snoqualmie Valley so that no one is isolated and alone, but active and involved. A key to the community dining program is not just the food, but the social socialization and community connection we all need. In our annual survey, people uh, come because the meals are delicious and enjoyable and because of support both of them. Our vision is that the Palmy Valley older adults are inspired, supported, and empowered to age well. And the city of Duval's support in 2023 with this grant makes aging an awesome opportunity. Uh, here's a little bit about what our participants say is the difference uh, you make in their lives. Uh, one of our seniors said, thank you for, for, for providing a place for good food, good friends, wonderful outings, and great classes. And another said, thank you for lunch, which is so delicious and nutritious, and leftovers make my dinners. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you again for your support. And also, uh, we're sent over your, the, our 2023 gratitude report, which has information about how we ended the year financially, lists more, you know, the grants that we got, and you do all the mentioned for their support. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to provide public comment this evening? All right, um, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion uh, to approve this evening's consent agenda? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to scheduled items. Um, we did both the mayor's report and city administrator report during committee of the whole with, with extra time. Are there any council members that have a report? We have President McKinley. Yeah, I had sent an email to council about our last uh, coffee with the Snoqualmie tribe and the city of Carnation. The next upcoming date is Monday, March 18th at 8.30 a.m. And this one will be in Duval. Um, currently, council member Schaefer has let me know if he would love to attend. I probably could. Um, it'd be nice to not have more than three, uh, just because usually there's two or three from each group. So um, if you're interested, you can let me know now and I can forward the invite to you. Um, and if you're not sure, you can get back to me. Mm -hmm. Email and no. Okay. Well, email me later if you decide you want to attend. Thank you. Any other council members with reports this evening? 
Seeing none, we'll move on to our only two items um, on the agenda this evening, both new business. First up is Agenda Bill 24-12, Building Code Ordinance for Discussion with Director Lara of Community Development and Brian Taylor for Building Commission. Good evening, Brian. Good to see you. Hey, good evening, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Council. Brian Taylor, building official. Um, I brought along Mark Lawrence uh, from Eastside Fire. He's our fire marshal. Um, we're bringing him on for uh, any questions the council might have. Um, again, bringing forth agenda bill 24-12 for the building code updates. Um, provided uh, a cleaner version of the strike and delete for council. Um, so really opening it up to the floor if anyone has any questions for us regarding the code. Hi, yeah, this question um, might not be um, more logistical communication, but I have seen show up in my feed another jurisdiction that was just giving a heads up to the community that this was coming more of a, I, I know that I'd asked at the last meeting and it sounds like some of the larger players that you work with have been notified of this upcoming change, but um, I'm not sure if the general public in Duval maybe knows it's coming. So I don't know if that's something that could go out on just the general social media. I'm not really sure the best way to communicate with the residents that live here that might want to know that. I don't know if that's something that we could do. Yeah, we can definitely look at maybe doing a flyer or uh, you know, the public outreach for that to let them know that what the codes are, uh, code changes are coming down. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I just wanted to ask, and Brian, please confirm this, but we have already started getting information out on our building page uh, for the code changes. And we did that a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, we did or before January. Mm -hmm. And, and this is really just more of a clarification off of a comment that Director Thomas made earlier. I know the March 15th date is the date we were sort of targeting for uh, implementation. I think you alluded that there were some questions around the timing, and I was really just curious if that was specifically around the date of implementation or if there was discussion in terms of any changes or any material impacts of the material that's already been shared with, with Council. Yeah, no, thank you for the question. Um, we are actively following the State Building Code Council, SBCC, um, on their meetings and updates uh, and any revisions and also following that Senate Bill 6120. Um, as of right now, we haven't, there's no updated information. Um, so what what we proposed or provided on um, the 6th, that's the most recent information that we have at this time. And um, in the coming weeks, I, I, I do see us uh, possibly getting some more information and then I'll be able to relay that to the, the council. Any other questions? Director Thomas, do we have anything to add? Uh, uh, as uh, Brian Killer said, we will bring forward the final ordinance at the next meeting. And the no changes of the legislature or the um, state building will be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah I'm to see you over there. All right, excellent. Um, well, thank you both for being here tonight. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, nice to meet you virtually and uh, glad to have you serving our community. So thank you both for being here this evening and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, uh, now we're moving on to our last uh, item of business, agenda bill 24 thir 13, selection of project for transportation improvement board grant for discussion and or decision with the line of Shesky. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council, staff and citizens, uh, Steve Lennon, Shesky Public Works. Um, and we'll keep the poll up, maybe the agenda bill and the image in the back. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, transportation improvement board, um, a quick staff report in the packet for your consideration came to us very recently. Um, 
and we first pulls it up some some data deadline essentially today we need to turn it in by march 1st uh, it's the resurrection of the complete street program uh we need to go uh, so, uh, so, some, some considerations. We have to turn it in by March 1st. It has to be ready to build this summer, and we have to get it done. So, that leaves little time for nothing else other than something we have in the hopper. And luckily, the 142nd Street Phase 2 project is a complete street eligible program. It's a road without a complete street, i.e., no curb gutter or sidewalk on one or either side. So we thought that was the quickest approach. We did meet with Greg from TIB. Um, he's very supportive of the project. We talked about funding. I don't believe we really need council, but TIB always likes it to be councilmatic because of funding. However, this one's in the budget already, but we thought it's nice to just end up put in here. That will help our uh, packet and our uh, application with TIB. Um, he suggested we go for 400,000, which is uh, almost the balance of the city's fiscal responsibility on the project. So that's uh, good news. And then anything we don't use, obviously, back to other projects. Uh, it's all city money that we were planning on, and some community development block grant money to the tune of 80 grand for design and 200 grand for uh, construction. So there's not a lot there. Um, if there's any questions, I think the big thing is time and why it's so fast, I don't know. TAB uh, is the TAB. So when they say they have money to spend, we expect to get it. Uh, outside of that, I don't have a lot. Uh, maybe if you aren't familiar with uh, where this is, uh, you can scroll down to the map. In between 275th and 278th on 142nd Street. Uh, that's the quick call of a design, but if you keep going to this, then you can actually be the last page. <laughs> uh, orange section is constructed, and then yellow is the design and moving forward. Is... Questions, comments, concerns? I didn't think there'd be any, but we just wanted to be formal and provide it. Sorry, there are, aren't other options that we can build this summer. Oh, yeah. Seems like council's good with it. And you know, we're good to go. Go ahead. I move mean, to suspend council procedures in section 5 6 regarding additional reviews and approve the general bill 2413 authorizing the mayor to direct staff to apply. For Transportation Improvement Board Complete Streets Grant for the Northeast 147 Plates Phase 2 Construction Project. Second. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Thank you. And with that, I cannot <laughs> believe I'm saying this. <laughs> Uh, this is a record even from years past. Like, this, I think this is an official record. Well, I mean, um, but unless there are objections, we are adjourned. It would have had to have been two four mayors ago.